Like, you know, know what's you know, really know. getting to be uh, lucrative is the social media video. Social, okay, YouTube, and that's, that's what my buddy oh. is doing. Yeah. <laughs> I'm serious. Yeah. shelter right now just because it's kind of a little bit quieter basically if you haven't noticed we're here at the uh, Milwaukee ice fishing show and uh, it's just really this is really cool it's kind of overwhelming I thought it was gonna be a little bit smaller but uh, this is really cool kind of reminds me of iCast but uh, yeah this is great I mean there's a lot of big names here like John Gillespie is his own TV show so that's pretty cool but uh, I'm just gonna keep walking around maybe talk to some people so. Is that all right? Perfect. No, that's fine. All I was right, just right. going to say, depending on this, we should get the owner here. So, <laughs> so, this is a genie jar. Pop that lid off. And that patented basket floats up so you can grab a minnow and keep dry. Keep your fingers dry. It's great because I can shake that off. I can put it in any of my ice armor or bibs. I flip it over. And when uh, my minnow's getting stressed out, I can use that strainer. And then here, if you take a look at this, if I use two fingers, I can fill that up, no matter how cold it is, and only get the tip of my finger wet. You can buy them at MissouriSecrets.com. Three casts without a bite, I gotta put them in. They're just not hitting me. I don't have any confidence. The only way we become better at what we do is by willing to fail. So we need to go out there, try something different, and learn something different. I will tell you right now that when it comes to uh, fishing for our big crappies we get, all we use is back plastics. So there's times they don't hit it real great. There's times they don't hit a middle real great. There's times they don't hit a euro larvae real great. But I will tell you that this is a triggering mechanism. These fish will come in and smoke this bait. Um, and a lot of times, if you look at what I can do with a minnow down here, as opposed to a plastic, I can make this plastic look a lot more realistic than a minnow hat. So, you know, I mean, there's a lot of pieces to tackle over there, guys. Um, you know, there's a lot of things that you can use and add to your program to catch more fish. Uh, what I'll tell you uh, from a lot of experience, and frankly, not because it's all success, because I've failed a lot of times, is that something different that you're not used to using sometimes can make a big, huge difference in your game. So, um, something I don't have laced up here, that, but is actually my favorite favorite spoon, is the clam bomb spoon. Uh, does anybody even know what the clam bomb spoon is here? Okay, clam bomb spoon. So, if you look at it, it's the shape of a, like a little bomb. So, it's, it fishes really small. What we have in the market, we got like 99% of the spoons, slender spoons at about this shape. You got a little different color, you got a little different shape. So we got a feather on it, we got a chain on it. But generally speaking, the spoon itself is exactly the same. When you look at that bomb spoon, when you jig that bomb spoon, I'm going to have to tie one up later today if I don't lose my voice. <laughs> um, when you look at that bomb spoon, when you jig the bomb spoon, what it does, it looks like two middle heads flopping together. Absolutely best bait I've ever used in my life. Yeah. Are looking up to guys like um, me, man. I know. What, what inspired me to be a guide was I was born into a fishing family. I was raised by my grandfather who spent every waking minute fishing and thinking about it. And let's just say the minute you put a fishing pole in my hands and I caught my first fish, that was my inspiration. What's kept me going all these years is just the fact that it's the only thing I love to do. There's so many different variables in fishing, no matter whether it's dipping, fishing different species or fishing different times of the year. We're outdoorsmen. I, we're, our, what our country was founded on is, is guiding, is, is people taking other people out. And that's what, for me, that's what it's all about. I just love being in the outdoors. You know, I love being part of the outdoors. I love nature and uh, understanding nature. That's that's all part of, you know, being being in love with doing what we do. Sweet. It's cool. Awesome. Yeah. I just... um, Is that right if I tape this? For, for you YouTube. Yeah, Is it okay? We got, we it's okay? Have YouTube. YouTube. Is that right? I'm no? I'm okay with that. No? Wait, why? You... So it's a lift throttling crank, okay. but there's no steel or lead shot in the body gap. So we've got a ceramic right. bead which weighs almost nothing. Okay. Right? Yep. And we've moved all the way to the front, the same keel. Right. So now we've got a crank that when you lay it on sand, it doesn't lie flat. This liftless crank 
sits like this. Oh, so it's almost, like, it's almost like a shaky head. It's a bottom a, bouncing yeah. lipless rod like Frank. That's and the awesome. point was for a mud flat or for a sand flat, your first cast would be in the top you know, six feet of the water hole. Standard lipless rod like Frank, retrieve. Right. right. Second cast, you count it down to 12 feet and work it again deeper. Right. right. But your third cast, instead of pivoting and looking for new water, you bring it back as an active feeding minnow. So now you're hopping it back on bottom. Right. So this is the only lipless rattling crank bait that can work the whole call. Wow. The guys like Winnipeg picked up on this bait, and they realized that they were using two artificials. They were using a, uh, a calling bait, like a lipless rattling crank or a blade bait to call, call them in. But often when a walleye comes in and doesn't want to hit the calling bait, it wants to hit a jig in the mud. But you can't put a blade bait in the mud. Right. Right. Your yeah. calling bait can never hit the mud, and your jig has no action to call them in. Right. But like Winnipeg guys realized that they could use this bait as their calling bait. It's got a real strong route. Great blade bait action. But if they're marking the fish on the flasher and the fish isn't committing to the aggressive presentation, they can put this, instead of reaching for their jig, they can put this right in the mud. Right. And then they're that active feeding minnow. Right. And that's exactly what a real active feeding minnow looks like is it's looking for freshwater shrimp or for um, uh, you know, scud for blood room and the of the water. And of course, if that doesn't work, you can draw the walleye up, you can twitch it up, try to lift that walleye for the water gun. That's what I was going to tell you too, Mario. I, you know, something in the fishing industry. I'm like, I'm you know like what's really getting to be uh, lucrative is the social media video. Social media, okay, YouTube, and that's that's what my buddy oh. is doing. Yeah. <laughs> I, I'm serious, yeah. Yeah. and it's a it's a really great way for you to get to learn and yeah. to get exposure, and who knows, and make click. Yeah. Um, I know a lot of the companies I work for now are saying. What are you doing with social media? What are you doing with videos? What are you doing with videos for Facebook? Right. And when you graduate and you're kind of talented, you're probably good on camera, right? Yeah, yeah. You just do how-to stuff, you know? Yeah. Uh, excuse me, how do you set up a plan? How do you, you know? Yeah. This is the way I jig. Exactly. Or, or you could do, a nice one would be to uh, do something on testing the equipment for companies. Oh, you know? go. A little advertisement at the same time. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah, and, yeah. and the way to turn your what you want to do for a living into the passion that you have which is fishing right, that's so my passion man yeah try yeah. to do it because uh, I, I was a sportscaster for 20 years okay i worked in dallas oh, football, right? yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. and i didn't like it okay. yeah. but so I, always, I love fishing has always been yeah. my passion yeah, dude, you're, you're so my contract <laughs> wasn't renewed at channel 4 here in milwaukee okay instead of moving to another city i thought right i'm gonna do a fishing show yeah and, and you know, we, we, we sold our house and bought a TV camera and started okay. the business. Right. What we have to do is buy half hours on the TV stations, oh, okay. then we sell the advertising. Okay. Right. So, so you're a, you got a window there. Are you doing kind of? Yeah, I mean, our show airs in Chicago, Minneapolis, Milwaukee, okay. so I've got to sell the advertising. Right. After I pay for the TV time. Cool. Yeah, we got the Kalen sponsor. We got we got the Kalen's on here somewhere. Oh, got, let's see. Yeah, we got the Uncle Josh. The Kalen's on here. Hey, there you go. Uh, and so you uh, run a ra yeah, you yeah. run a ranger. Yeah, uh, I wish, man. I got a track. Uh, <laughs> but I mean, I, I'm, I'm, I'm working my way up. <laughs> I'm, run, I'm running along. I'm going to switch to Skeeter this year. I'll see what okay, happens. Skeeter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Man, Hardy over here, dude. <laughs> this guy right here is literally. I learned more from this guy, like. I know you can get it all the time. It's all about learning, dude. It's about learning. I mean, you know, you come to the shows here, you talk to the pros, you know, you get a chance to, uh, you know, you ask them questions, and, you know, for the most part, most guys are just, you know, just want to pass it on, right? You know, I mean, there's a lot, there's a lot to be learned. It's all about learning, dude. Always learning. I'll learn stuff from you. You learn stuff from me. It awesome. makes me a better angler. Yeah. <laughs> it makes you a better fisherman. You watch the videos, come to the shows. Exactly. Yeah. It's all about learning, man. Just be a student of the game. The minute you guys think you got it all figured out, you're dialed in, and trust me, there's a dime a dozen. Guys come in the boat. Yeah, they're good at flipping or skipping or this or that. Mm -hmm. yeah. But when that bite isn't going good, you don't know you how to be deep able to crank. And you go trout fishing. You know, or, exactly. <laughs> yeah, forget the bass, man. We got everything that swims out here. Oh, you get here, you get trout. Yep. Huskies, walleyes. Yeah. I like big smallies. So. Dude, you gotta, big got, we gotta go get some big smallies. We gotta get back to you. I was out in the harbor. I'm, 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 I'm trying something new. I got some raw shrimp from the Asian market. Yep. Yeah. Put the borax in there. Those salt and sugar. I was doing a lot of research, man. But it's, it's been a good technique. And I went out yesterday. How, I don't. How big would you say this guy is? Man? I released it. He was. I was nice. But I. He, I held him in a way where he, he wasn't bleeding. I'd he was say. A good fish, man. I'd say. Uh, Twelve pounds. Twelve pounds. Yeah, he's yeah. a good fish. On a float or what? 
Uh, no, I, I was just doing, I had six pound test straight to a small hook and shrimp, and I just let it drift. Yeah. And they, and I would see them, they're running the walls, man. Yeah. Of course, these guys are sagging. Oh, yeah. They just stand it, man. They're spooking the fish. Yeah. Yeah. They're running the walls, yeah. and I yeah. dropped about five feet in front of them. Yeah. And like you said, exactly like you said, they'll circle it, and they'll nose it, and they'll, they'll go away, and they'll come back. Yeah. And dude, you're right on. Yeah, yeah I mean, there, and the thing is, you'll see those fish down there. Yeah. Some guys, you see guys that just, they can't help themselves. They they see the fish, yeah. some bite, some don't, but if they don't bite, they're gonna snag them. Yeah, exactly. But what guys don't realize is you can catch them, but how do you catch them? They're real finicky, you know, yeah. just a little tiny hook, yep. shrimp, spawn, little jig, little plastic, yeah. you know, not like, it's a big fish. Right. You think big bait, but no. no. Yeah. 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 Away. This guy is, is the man. <laughs> the man. So. He's the legend in the fishing. Yeah. I was just talking to uh, John. I told you I wanted to like get involved in the fishing. He said, he said do the video production like you were telling me, do the YouTube and all that yeah. stuff. And, yeah. If you love fishing, yeah. you know what? I mean, I've always loved fishing my whole life. It's, right. it's all I think about. It's all I want to do. Right. There's jobs in the fishing industry, whether it's, uh, you know, everyone thinks, you know, maybe the tournament is the way to go. Be yeah. a tournament angler. It's the trending. But you don't realize, like, uh, from an investment or a, or a financial standpoint, you know, it's 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 a tough way to make a living. You're yeah. investing eighty thousand dollars in a boat, twenty thousand dollar boat entry fees. Now you got to win. You're a hundred thousand dollars in the hole, and you got to win. And you're going against the best guys. And that's, yeah. and that's not counting I mean, that's, equipment that you have. That's to like keep it's a gamble, you know. And 80, 95 percent of all guys lose that gamble. So if you can get into you know, working for a fishing company, yep. if you can get in video production, right. if you can get in and help with sales, if you can get in with a rep group, if you love to hunt and you love to fish, you can work in this industry, but finish up your degree. Get good at editing videos, get good at sales. You know, come here and talk to people. Follow your passion, you know, don't give up on it. If you love it, people are gonna say no. People are gonna, you're gonna fail. You know, but so what? You know, you just, you get your butt kicked, you get knocked down, you get your ass right back up, and you keep fighting the fight. It's the passion and the fuel that keeps you going, that keeps me going. I failed. I had a TV show. I, you know, I started guiding. I wasn't successful. But I love fishing so much, I just didn't stuck to it. Didn't give up. I just kept going. I used the internet. I used something else. I talked to people. You know, and you just don't stop, and all of a sudden a door opens up, exactly. opportunities open up, and and then you make it happen. But it's, I mean, you just don't give up, buddy. That's awesome. That's awesome, awesome, man. All right, guys. Thank you, man. Appreciate it. Nice to meet you. You too. That's so sick. That's awesome, man.